All right. It's that time. It's time for Beyond Sight and Sound. Let's do this. Looking for a high quality beach and sand scoop? Are you trying to take your hunting to the extreme? How about an American based company that stands behind their product and everything they sell? Then check out our friends over at Extreme Scoops. John has been making scoops for some time now and makes a quality beach and sand scoop to take your hunting to the next level. Extreme Scoops recently released their new sand shredder that works great in the water and on the beach. And if you're a new Equinox user, you may want to check out his Surfmaster X3 that can trap those small targets you new Equinox users are finding out there. Extreme Scoops company approach is let's do it right. So do it right, buy it once, and go to the extreme. Extremescoops.com That's X-T-R-E-M-E scoops.com Hey boys and girls, we are going to talk about S&W Shooters and Prospectors. What is S&W Shooters and Prospectors? We at S&W Shooters and Prospectors help people find treasure. Did you say treasure? Yes, treasure. Just listen to this amazing reveal from our happy customer, Jackie Sparrow. Err, chocolate ship shape, and a pleasure to deal with. I was able to buy everything that I needed at prices that were shillings less than others. I found my nine pieces of meat in no time. Savvy? I know you're asking yourself, why should I shop at SW Shooter and Prospectors? Chuck Smalley has over 45 years of metal detecting experience. He works with each customer one on one to customize their setup to match their skill level. So if you always dreamt of being a pirate, Arr. contact Chuck at SW Shooters and Prospectors and he'll take a great deal for you. I pass rum, not included. Caution. Please do not operate motor vehicles or power equipment while under the influence of this show. Listening to this show could cause side effects such as bouts of laughter, violent binges of cabin fever, and even dreams of silver and gold. Please be advised. Now that the fine print is out of the way, on with the show. All right, the fine print's out of the way. It's time to roll with the show. We're back. Or are we? <laughs> We're back. You're listening to Beyond Sight and Sound Metal Detecting and Treasure Running Radio for all the really cool digging people out there. And, you know, hello future me, hello future followers, listeners, friends. I'm here, and you're not, yet, because we're pre-recording once again. That's the way it goes sometimes. But, 
that gives us a chance to go ahead and cover a few more details, try to keep everyone up to date as much as possible on the situation at hand and what's going on. So, I guess we'll get right into things, obviously. I mean, you folks are busy. You got things to do, I'm sure. So, first off, congratulations once again to Mike Lockelmet, Metal Detecting Central Illinois. He was the winner of the silver half for the Indian contest that we had running on the Metal Detecting Beyond Sight and Sound Facebook group. Uh, his shipping information has been forwarded on to Chuck, and Chuck is getting Mike's prize packaged up and, and sent on its way to Mike. So, Mike, you will be receiving that um, here in a few days, hopefully. And hopefully we see some photos posted up about it. Um, Sunday's episode, because now here we are, uh, Sunday was New Year's Eve, we did a little pre-recorded show, and now here we are January 3rd, so it's after the beginning of the year. Happy New Year to everyone. Hopefully everyone had a uh, safe and happy holiday weekend. Uh you know, ended 2023, rolled into 2024 with new hopes, aspirations, uh, you know, hopefully not expectations. I mean, we all would expect that 2024 will be a, a better year for us in terms of hunting and fines, and hopefully for many of us, it's a golden year. Who doesn't like to find a piece of gold, right? <laughs> and some of us had a really banner year for 23. Really good year. Uh, I don't know. I I think... I mean, I have been in communication with Chuck, and I think he does plan on trying to post up a few photos of maybe the Indians that he's found, or some of the finds that he has found this year that he may want to, may feel like sharing with everyone. Who knows? Uh, I mean, Chuck had a very, very good year in 23. Um, I'm not sure, you know, some, some of the finds that he made, who knows if he's willing to share with everyone or not, uh, but he did. Uh, rest assured, I can, I can guarantee you, he had a very good year. He's been very pleased, and a lot of the finds that he made in 23 were done with the Equinox 800, the Equinox 900, uh, the Manicore. He has found himself very impressed with the Manicore, its features, performance, and capabilities. He's done, he's done well. He's pleased. He's got nothing to complain about. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. And I know a number of the other listeners have had a very good year. Uh, Ian, you've, you've seen him in the chat from time to time. He found his first gold in 23 on the beach. And that kind of, um, Broke the seal for him, so to speak, because he's found a number of other gold items since then on the beach, and even been involved in a couple of returns. So he's done good. He's done very well for himself. He should be pleased. Uh, I believe, actually, this year, yeah, this this past year, 23, 
he incorporated his new uh, logo, sticker, what have you. So he's having a blast with it. He's enjoying the hobby. He's he's big on the Nocta machines. They have been doing quite well for him, and he's very pleased with the performance that he's getting out of them. And there again, we saw a number of great machines released over 23, uh, a number of updates released for those machines, and ended the year off, which some of you folks remember the episode we did, we had Delec and Mark on from Nocta talking about the AccuPoint Pinpointer, and we had been talking about it in past episodes rolling up to the holiday season here on the show. Uh, we gave away three pinpointers the night that Delec and Mark were on the show. You folks have heard me talk about it. You've heard Frank talk about it over on Detect America. You, you've heard uh, Chuck mention his first impressions of it and everything. I've had it out, using it a little bit. It's a very nice setup, and I got to tell you, the the carrot has stood at the top of the pile as far as the uh, popularity, the standard pinpointer, the go-to that people would use. So Noak has got quite a hill to climb, so to speak, but... They have got a excellent pinpointer on their hands with the AccuPoint. I mean, it's... I gotta say, it is by far probably the loudest pinpointer that I've ever used. Which, for some of us out there in the hobby that may have issues with hearing could be an advantage, or if you like to stay a little bit on the discreet and stealth side, you can operate the pen pointer in vibrate-only mode. So that's always a good thing. There are options, and that's that's what we like to hear about. That's what we like to uh, know about and everything. So we do have that going on. But more importantly... <laughs> I'm sure that uh, people are wondering what is going on with the show. So, we'll delve into that for a few minutes. Um, obviously, we'll we'll try not to keep everybody too terribly long again tonight because, uh, you know, we're we're still in the process of. Changing things, switching things around, and, and things of that nature. So in the previous episode, Sunday's episode, New Year's Eve, we had mentioned to people that uh, the current broadcasting service that we're using, which once again, this episode originated and propagated from Spreaker, we had mentioned that for whatever reason, they have removed their live feature and that's why some of your favorite shows or whatever that you normally follow you have not been getting notifications of now that being said i've been a little frustrated to say the least because i'm getting told that the live feature is no longer supported. And imagine my surprise. Sunday, we pre-recorded the episode like support had recommended. And I don't know. I'm still kind of up in the air about that. I mean, yes, it's a pre-recorded show. It's not an archive, so it's something that you have not heard before, so to speak. It's not a rerun. I'll put it that way. But um, we went through, we put the time in to do the pre-recorded show for New Year's Eve. 
We scheduled that to publish at our normal show time because we, we try to have the show go off at 8 p.m. Eastern on Sundays and Wednesdays. As you know, we run two shows a week. And that's why we're here tonight with this uh, pre-recorded run, but not pre-recorded chat. Put it that way. So we get everything up and, and going. It's set in place for our New Year's Eve episode. And I want to say it may have been about about a half hour before we were going before the show was going to publish that night. And I get a notification that a show went live. Imagine my frustration when I see that. And I'm being told the live feature is not supported. So I take a screenshot of the notification. And I quickly send that off to support. With multiple question marks as to why. You know, you you tell me that the live feature is not supported. But I get this notification. What gives? WTH, right? So, I wait for the reply because even though their offices are based in the Eastern Time Zone, they usually don't get back to me until somewhere between midnight and 2 o'clock in the morning. And I don't get a response. Okay, fine, whatever. But here I am doing a pre-recorded show telling you folks that the live feature is no longer supported at this time. I mean, they, they hope to bring it back, but they cannot give me a clear, concise answer as to a definite time frame. They're only saying, in the near future, we hope to bring it back. So I don't know. Read into it however you want. Either way, they don't respond to me. Sunday night comes and goes. Monday night rolls around. I get another notification of a show going live. So I quickly take a screenshot of it. And I fire off another email to support. Saying, what gives... See attached screenshots. View the previous communications in this email thread where you can clearly see that I'm being told that the live feature is not supported. And you can clearly see where I'm being told that it's strongly recommended that we pre-record and publish episodes that way for the time being, which is what we have been doing. This time, I do get an email communication back, and they say that they can confirm at this point, and this comes from support, the support team, they can confirm that the life feature is no longer supported at this time, but I can continue to send screenshots of these notifications so that they can look into it. And they hope to bring the life feature back at another point in time in the near future. The near future is all they can say as far as time frame. Well, naturally, I'm sure you folks don't like the answer. I wasn't necessarily fond of the answer myself, but what what do you do? I mean, we're, we're all a victim of the situation at hand, in a sense. My hands are tied. There's nothing that I can do about it. Uh, well, there, there are some things that I can do about it, and we'll get into that. But there's nothing that, 
you folks as the listeners can do about it because we're we're stuck with the situation that we have. We have to do the best that we can. Grin and bear it. Continue to be patient. And hope for the best and know that this is not the way that things are going to continue. So, like I said, there are things that I can do about it. I did send them back an email um, letting them know that I was not very pleased. Uh, Folks that have, have followed the show here, I mean, it's not our first venue, it's not our first rodeo. We've been doing this for a while. And many of you know, you've been there since day one. And you followed us from venue to venue. And we greatly appreciate that. The venue that we're on, we had been with for more than seven years. And I mentioned to them that, you know, I... I've been with you guys for over seven years. I have literally spent thousands of dollars in broadcast fees with you guys. And not once. I mean, there have been some hiccups, yes, occasionally, as we have. Technology, it's great when it works, and when it doesn't, it can be a little frustrating and hair-pulling. We have had glitches and hiccups that we've worked through, and that's not been an issue. And I've never once needed customer support until December 20th. And this is the support that I'm getting. I'm starting to feel like... uh, Maybe the service that I'm paying for, I'm overpaying. I'm I'm not. Those of us that uh, operate shows here, we pay for a broadcast package, a broadcast plan. And it is a tiered plan. It may, obviously, it's going to be different for those, uh, depending on what they're doing. So one show may pay a little more than another, a little less than another, here, there, vice versa, what have you. And we're paying for a service that promotes that they are a live broadcasting podcast platform. Obviously, as you see, the live feature is not available right now. So what do you do? Well, that's where the tricky part comes in. We're going to try to keep the feed available if it's needed in the future. Until then, we've done some looking around, we've made a choice, we're going to try to go with a different podcast hosting service, and we'll try it, and we'll see how it works, and as we get closer to that, we'll go ahead and we'll keep the listeners up to date, you know, follow the Beyond Sight and Sound page on Facebook, Mental Detecting Beyond Sight and Sound group. Uh, my timeline, Josh Kimmel, um, and you'll be able to find those updates. And we'll try to put up an episode, too, as it gets closer to time here for people that, that hit the archives, uh, the pre-recorded, and all of that stuff, so that they know what's going on. The biggest thing to remember is as we get closer to the... Necessary changes that are going to have to be done. As we get closer to that, we will let you folks know 
what's happening. And many times we drop a link, a promo, a post for the show on the nights that we do shows. And when we drop that, we drop a link that takes you directly to the channel page or directly to that specific episode. And that won't change. We, we will continue to do that. Even if we change to another podcast service, we will still continue to do that. So you will still be able to find the show. Also, on the flip side of the coin... We are very seriously entertaining doing at least one YouTube live stream a month in place of a regular show night. So it won't be on top of the other shows that we normally do. It will be in place of. So say, for example, the last Sunday of the month or the last Wednesday of the month. Whatever, it will be a Sunday or a Wednesday that we will do a YouTube live stream. Maybe we can even port that into uh, Facebook Metal Detecting Beyond Sight and Sound group or something like that. Or maybe directly to the uh, Beyond Sight and Sound page. We'll have to see what's going on. Uh, and and we're, we're entertaining that. We're, we're entertaining doing that just to see... Do people prefer a video live stream, or do they prefer just strictly live audio podcast? And we'll see how that goes. We may keep that at just one live stream a month, just to add a different element, a different dimension to the show. Obviously, I know some of the archive hitters and things like that, they... They like the audio podcast because they listen to it on their commute to work or when they're on long trips. Maybe they binge listen to episodes of the show. And that's great. We appreciate that. We really do. Just because it's a video live stream doesn't necessarily mean that you have to watch the video. You could have the video up and just listen to the audio. So there is that option. And on those nights that we would do that, I will uh, s strip the audio from the video live stream and bring that over and upload that as a MP3 file so it's like a strictly audio podcast for the people that do like to hit the archives and everything. If they can't make it to the YouTube live stream, they can still catch the archive of the audio portion of that live stream. And we'll see how that goes. We'll, we'll see if there's much interest in that. Maybe it, uh, you know, maybe we can kind of generate that into, who knows, maybe two live streams a month. If there's interest in it. I don't know, moving on from here how that's going to work out. So that's something to think about. And we'll see what happens, which uh, that does... I do still have the YouTube channel. I will be resurrecting it. Um, the cover art is already there. I'll have to make a, a few changes. I'll go in and change the name from Ohio Metal Detecting to Beyond Sight and Sound so that people can uh, make that association easier It'll be easier to find the channel, and obviously on those nights that we try to do a YouTube live stream, we will make sure and drop a link to that so that you can click the link and follow directly to the YouTube channel. Another thing that's come up is that uh, we'll wait and see. We'll have to see what happens. There is a possibility that if we run into an issue where the audio side of things is somewhat restricted from the live run, that we may have to make an announcement that, you know, as long as I can get it off the ground, uh, 
that we will be live streaming YouTube the remainder of the month or whatever the case can could be. So we've got that going on. And this is all, folks have to understand, this is all going to take a little bit of time. We need everyone to be patient. And we appreciate everyone being patient. Uh, actually, there was quite a bit of feedback from Sunday's pre-recorded show, the New Year's Eve episode. And there were some listeners that reached out to me that um, they they appreciated the episodes. Uh, they they enjoy listening. They. They appreciate the the things that they've learned or the entertainment that they've had, either interacting with others in the chat or with the show itself, The some of the stories that I've had to share, or especially in the past, uh, say, a uh, few years, easily, uh, some of the stories that Chuck has had to share or even the live remotes that we've done. And... We're going to try and keep that going. There actually a couple of listeners did approach me with some suggestions on the the idea that I'm trying to incorporate and put in place. I'm running on a theory that I I won't know if it works until I put it to practical application. So there's going to be a little bit of acclimation period for those that have been with us when we have switched venues before. Sometimes there has been a little bit of acclimation period, a few episodes, just to kind of tweak and fine-tune everything. And we may be going into another one of those acclimation periods again. Uh but as long as the theory, I mean, the, the and the theory is sound. As long as the concept that I'm working with, as long as I'm able to pull that off, not only will we still, I mean, we'll still have caller capability regardless, one way or the other. But if I can pull it off, we will still have the regular call-in number that many of you are used to when we switch to the new venue. And we will be able to incorporate that into the YouTube live streams as well if if we would choose to incorporate that part into YouTube live streams. So we'll see how that goes. There's going to be a little bit of time and acclimation to this. And as long as it does work, then we we will know that the theory has been tested, it's been tried, it's it's been proven, and then we'll move on from there. And when we do that, that's going to require one more piece of equipment. But it it will work out well. Because that's that's the other thing we're doing with this move is we're trying to go back to our professional studio sound, which is only going to make for a more comfortable listening environment for those that follow the show. It'll give us an, a nice professional sound. It'll give them a a, a more comfortable listening environment. Uh, in terms of, say, <clears throat> when there is an episode that, uh, like, it, it, here's a good example. In the past, we've had episodes where there may be a, a great guest. Chuck is very interested in interacting with the guest, but his internet goes down. What do we do? How do we get Chuck into the show? So we're working on that, and and this theory also takes that into consideration, and we'll we'll see how that goes moving on from this point. The equipment that has been ordered, it is in route. Don't hold me to it. Hopefully, and I stress this, we can 
in theory, be able to go back to live runs, live audio podcasts, with a chat for you folks to interact in within the next um, uh, 10 days, maybe. So we just need people to hold on just a little bit longer. I mean, I'm trying to get things in place as quick as I can. Unfortunately, I have no control over the speed of the shipping services either. So, we're trying to get things in place. Chuck is chomping at the bit to get back to the show. He he loves the interaction with the listeners. He likes to hear the stories from everyone and and chit chat a little bit and things of that nature. Um, but when it comes to the show, I am kind of the the IT guy, you know, producer, host, IT, whatever you want to say. And we're trying to get things done. I've been keeping Chuck up to date. Chuck's been in contact with me. He's been keeping me up to date. And we're doing what we can to get things back up and going as soon as possible. And that should hopefully be not much longer. The important thing to remember is that uh, I, I think some people got a little confused with New Year's Eve episode and thought that um, we were going to quit doing the show altogether. No, we're not going to quit doing the show altogether. The show is still going to remain in some way, shape, or form. The project will continue. It's just we may expand on it and become a little more diversified and start working in a video live stream as well through the YouTube side and see how that goes. So, we've got that part of it going on. Um, Coincidentally enough, this glitch that has popped up has also popped up at the same time that this particular hosting service has launched a beta patron program, which is kind of their version of Patreon. We have not tried to uh, activate that beta program at all. Uh, there may be some advertising being piped in. I don't, I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not sure how that all works. Uh, we've, we've been trying to stay away from all of that. And you folks know, we left blog talk because of intrusive advertising, because they would put up full screen video ads that would lock up some people's computers. With the popularity of podcasting, podcasting has boomed once again in the last year by another 37%, and it has become quite a large marketplace for companies, products, brands, logos to advertise. If that's what they're going to do, that's what they're going to do. But as long as it is audio and it is just, you know, short little clips, uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. I, I don't know. You know, maybe I know some of the other shows have advertising. We've always tried to keep the ads that we have here running niche to the hobby or the topic at hand, and obviously we always run the clip for our friends over at Shooters and Prospectors. Uh, Chuck is a great dealer to deal with. Tons of experience, 
and uh, really, really great after-sale customer service. And that is why you should deal with a reputable dealer and not a big box store or online merchant. Either way, I have received notifications, um, you know, some of the equipment has arrived. We're still waiting on another piece before we can try to incorporate all of this once again. And we will see how things go from there. We hope that uh, things do go well. And we will be back very shortly. Hopefully, you folks remain to be patient. Continue to be patient. Stay calm. It'll be all right. We'll make it through this. We will. And don't forget to... Um, when we when we do wind up making that change, which I can already tell you we've uh we've already been setting things in place in case we do have to make a change, and as we get closer to that, we'll let more of those details out until then we'll we'll see what we can do, and we'll move on. It may take a couple of episodes for us to get everything fine-tuned and tweaked and all of that, and we will get that all done in the first few episodes. But continue to stay tuned, because, like I said, we, we do have a nice silver pack that we will be giving out uh, when we when we get things going back to normal. You know, it's got the uh, Morgan Silver Dollar, I believe the Walker Silver Half, the Silver Washington Quarter, and the Silver Mercury Dime. Uh, we may have some additional silver out there as well, maybe even some copper, uh, things like that. And then with the suggestions from a couple of other listeners, they did make some some good suggestions that I had not necessarily thought about. And that's one of the great things of the listeners reaching out. I'm always, I, I try to do what I can to make myself available to the listeners if they have any questions or anything like that, any, anything of that nature. And with the ideas that uh, were posed to me by a, a few listeners, there it's an interesting idea, and we'll see moving forward. We may implement that idea as well, which uh, very kind of them. And and like I said, seriously, folks. Very, very kind of everyone that has reached out to us. We, we always appreciate the messages and, and the, uh, the comments, the feedback, the, the, what have you. We always appreciate it. I know I get messages quite a bit from different people. Chuck gets messages quite a bit from different people. Sometimes he gets messages from people that I didn't even realize listened to the show. Or both of us find out that there are people in parts of the world that didn't even know was, didn't even know that they knew the show was out there, didn't even know that they knew the show existed, but they're listening and they're enjoying. So please continue to be patient. Please continue to enjoy the show and we'll continue to be there for our valued friends. I mean, yes, I say listeners. Uh, occasionally we mention followers. But really, it, we're all a big group of friends. It, it's kind of like family. That's like uh, when I run the bumpers. I don't mention, you folks may notice, I don't mention sponsors. I don't mention advertisers. I mention them as 
friends. You know, whether it's Shooters and Prospectors, Chuck Smalley, whether it's Detect America, you know, uh, Nokta, Mind Lab, Extreme Scoops, what, whatever, what have you. We're all a bunch of friends. So, continue to hang in there, folks. Stay with us as we uh, make it through this adjustment and acclimation. We'll come out on the other side of the storm just fine. Until then, it looks like this is what we're doing. Uh, Pre-recorded run. That being said... We'll be back with uh, another episode for you folks soon, and we'll see what happens then. Until the next one, we're going to roll. Stay safe. Get out there and try to find something if you can. Post up those photos. You know how we love to see them. And here for us, we're about to be locked up. We had some electrical issues with the truck. That was unexpected. I had to uh, put a new starter in, and hopefully that takes care of it. And now the ground is about to be locked up. We've got snow coming. Big storm on the northeast, and uh, looks like it's going to come our way too. So stay safe. Obviously, if you want to reach out with a comment, suggestion, anything like that about the show, uh, feel free to reach out to me, PM me through Josh Kimmel on Facebook. Don't use the Beyond Sight and Sound Messenger. It's With the changes that Facebook has made, it's difficult to uh, to get the notifications of those messages, so there's an extreme delay on getting back through there, where if you message me directly, chances are good you will get a quick response. So we'll see what happens. Stay safe. Enjoy the evening, folks. We're out of here.